obtain a warrant to surreptitiously spy on an American citizen who has Fourth Amendment rights. And to further use as support news stories that were sourced by the same author of the dossier that they put up as, as proof. Now, whether or not you think it's proper or appropriate for political documents to be used as a basis for a warrant, I get it, you can understand there are different concerns there, and I think that courts should really scrutinize these these FISA warrants a lot more than they are. I mean, there, there are reports that there are tens of thousands of these warrants that were sworn out, and maybe a handful, and I'm talking like 12, something like that, that were turned down. It's essentially a rubber stamp. And I know that people are saying, well, the judges have to determine it, and you know these judges are appointed by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Yeah, but they're not defense counsels. They only have to worry about meeting a certain threshold. And depending upon the information that the FBI gives them, which, by the way, is not refuted by anybody because there's nobody there to take up an opposition point of view. Understand something about the, the FISA courts, the, the FISC. Understand that there is no defense counsel. And I know I took a, a brunt of abuse from this on Twitter saying that there should be a defense counsel. And I'm sticking to that position. Currently in the FISA courts, there is a public advocate that can take a position or not. Those public advocates are looking out for the interests of the people. General overarching points of public policy. Not necessarily delving into the facts and circumstances surrounding the evidence presented in the memo. Talking about the interests of public policy. But there is no defense counsel. There is no, like, appointed defender, a public defender, for lack of a better word, that has a job to tear apart the nation's case, the FBI's case, the Department of Justice's case. It's just not there. Because typically, looking for warrants is an ex parte, meaning that only one side appears before the court, proceeding. And it's understandable when you talk about normal warrants, when you're talking about getting a warrant to search someone's home, to search someone's car, to search someone's person. You don't want the target or the suspect to know about the execution of the warrant or that the warrant was sworn out until its execution. But when it's being executed, the target of the warrant knows. They see their house getting uh, ransacked or, lack of a better word, searched. They see their car getting uh, delved into. You know, they are feeling the touching upon that person to be able to search them, or to gather the DNA from them, or whatever the case may be, the swabbing of the cheek, the pulling of the hair. Those are all things where the target of the warrant finds out what's going on. When you're the target of a FISA warrant, and you're an American citizen, you're never going to know that you're the target. You're just going to be the target, and they're going to surreptitiously tape you regardless of your Fourth Amendment protections, because presumably the court has already reviewed that and says that there are no Fourth Amendment considerations here, that national security is, you know, the prime objective, and that these warrants further those national security interests. Now, just imagine if there was an appointed advocate. You don't have to let the target know that they have an advocate in court, but you can have an office of target advocate. Much like the way you have an office of victim advocate in some states. So you have, an, you have a, um, like we have in FISA with this uh, Amiki Curie uh, public advocate that talks about public policy in the interest of justice. You can, ha- you can absolutely reform the law to have that. And frankly, I'm trying to figure out why Democrats and, and those who champion the cause of civil liberties, you know, those out there fighting for Black Lives Matter, and for abuses by police forces, I'm trying to understand why they're just knocking over and playing dead for FISA. They should, they should be more concerned, because if they can do this to the President of the United States, what makes you think that the Department of Justice and the FBI can't do this to you? What makes you think that there can't be some sort of malintent by the government to hold up your rights and your privileges under the law? And before you tell me it doesn't happen, I refer you to the recent decision and settlement by the IRS with an organization that was a nonprofit applying for tax exempt status that was looking to further the causes and having to do with Israel. It took them six years in court to get an apology from the IRS and to say, yes, 
we targeted you because of your beliefs. So before you say it can't happen, not only can it happen, it has happened, and it has happened very recently under the same administration that created the lax requirements for FISA warrants. And we sure as heck ain't talking about the Trump administration. We're talking about the Obama administration. Listen, we got a lot more show left. But when we come back, what is PETA trying to do to my childhood? We'll delve into that topic next. Gene Baradelli, Behind Enemy Lines. We'll be back right after these brief words. Hey, folks, I just want to let you know about a great opportunity for listeners of Behind Enemy Lines Radio. If you go to our website, www.behindenemylinesradio.us, and click on the same box ad on the right side of the page, you will get a great opportunity for a discounted offer to join SaneBox. SaneBox filters out all the unimportant email from your inbox so that you can really focus on what matters. If you're anything like me, folks, you get hundreds of pieces of email a day, not many of which is important. SaneBox's smart filter will get everything you need to fly through your inbox and finally make email work for you. It gets rid of spam emails, it deprioritizes emails that aren't as important to you, and it helps you unsubscribe from mailing lists and individual senders with ease. So again, go to www.behindenemylinesradio.us and you click on the same box ad and you'll be given an exclusive offer you won't find anywhere else. It's important to plan ahead for emergencies, like like the storm. storm. When it kicked in, we had a plan. We were able to get in touch with each other in no time. had no idea how to find each other. The whole experience was was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms out there, it's to stay it's calm to and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at readypa.org. Brought to you by Ready PA, FEMA, and the Ad Council. Time for a little music. We call this, What the F*** is Maxine Waters Saying? And to be clear, you believe it would have been better to keep in place an FBI director who you said had no credibility to oversee this investigation than to find someone who you think would be a better choice. No. <laughs> but I believe the president thought that. Don't forget, you're talking about what some Democrats said, what I said, but don't forget, he was the president. The president supported him. He had confidence in him. It was his, it, within his power. And well, you said he had no credibility, so it, it would seem to I make did. sense that he I should get rid of him. No. No, no, no. Under investigation, this president basically has interfered with an investigation where he may be implicated. That's outrageous, and that's why we're having so much of a conversation about it today. The bottom line is that you think an FBI director without credibility would have been best served in this position to, to try to pursue is, this I think, investigation. I think if the president, if the president had fired him when he first came in, uh, he would not have to be in a position now where he's trying to make up a story Understood. about why it does I'm, not meet the smell test. Yeah, something smells all right. Understood. So if Hillary Clinton had won the White House, would you have recommended that she fire FBI Director James Comey? Well, let me tell you something. If she had won the White House, I believe that given what he did to her and what he tried to do, she should have fired him. So she should have fired him, but he shouldn't have fired him. This is why I'm confused. She, no, it's, it's, no, you're not confused. Uh, yes, I am. Gene Baradelli, back behind enemy lines. I'm going to keep playing that clip of our reigning and defending 2017 buffoon of the year, Maxine Waters, till the wheels come off. (laughs) Did you see her rebuttal to the State of the Union? I mean, I could barely watch it. I might, you know what? I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm not even talking about it on the show because it's not worth talking about. But there were so many different rebuttals. There was uh, Mr. Chapstick himself, you know, easy on the Carmex there, uh, Mr. Kennedy. But what does it say about the world of Schiff and the world that he lives in, the progressive world, that the rebuttal they're coming up with to represent the common folk, to represent the movement, to represent the, you know, the Black Lives Matter and, 
you know, the, the Me Too's of the world. What better representative than a Kennedy? <laughs> what better representative than, oh, I can't even say it without laughing. And he's in Fall River, Massachusetts with a broke down car behind him. And he's a Kennedy. Chappaquiddick much? I mean, talk about a lack, a shocking lack of self-awareness. Buffoonery, much like Maxine Waters. Did you guys watch that? Did you did you see did you see the thing on his lip and and all the things that he was saying about tearing down a wall? When meanwhile you look at his house, there's a giant concrete wall around his home. Come on, Congressman Kennedy. If this is the rising star, if this is the bench that we have to worry about from the Democrats in 2018 and beyond. I think Republicans may be in good shape. And the numbers are starting to prove that now. You're seeing people are getting their their Trump money in in their uh in their checks. They're less coming out in taxes. I know my check has some extra money in it and and it is quite welcome. It's not crumbs, uh Congresswoman Pelosi. It is definitely not crumbs in my household. It is savings. It goes towards my nephew, and you know, it is very much welcome. And it, it rewards my vote. Once again, President Trump rewarded my vote with Neil Gorsuch's swearing in as a justice of the Supreme Court, and he rewarded it further with his tax reform and more money in my pocket. I think that's a vote well given. And and speaking of, and I mentioned my my nephew Marcos, and uh, I, I want to bring this up only because I do want to announce the winner of our... American Pravda signed book giveaway that we did on Facebook. Carol Gibbs from uh, Chaskin, Minnesota, I believe it is. Uh, the book has been mailed out to her. It's on the way through the post. And uh, it was a pleasure to do the drawing for that on Facebook. You can check it out on our Facebook page for Behind Enemy Lines Radio. And making a special guest appearance in that video is my nephew Marcos, my my six-year-old nephew, going on seven. Seven going on 17, if you if you think about it, if you live with him and, and you see him growing up so quickly. Uh, he actually pulled the name out of the hat. He uh, he hammed it up for the camera, and he basically controlled the, the little video that we did. It was wonderful to do. I love watching it. But more than that, and this is where it gets, the cuteness factor goes off the scale. Marcos then did, on his own, without telling us, his own quote-unquote reaction video to pulling out the name on one of my devices. Took my device, hit record, didn't let me know it. I come to find it uh, when I get the device and I'm going through and I'm saying, hey, where are all these videos coming from? He created a little video with his reaction to helping out Behind Enemy Lines. And we posted that also on Facebook, on Behind Enemy Lines Radio's Facebook page. You want to see cuteness? Check that out. Again, congratulations, Carol Gibbs for uh, winning the book. Hopefully you enjoy it. Make sure you take a picture of it for us and show us, show us that you got it and how much you enjoy it. And we'll definitely put that out, up on uh, social media and uh, a whole bunch of different places, probably the website as well, at www.behindthemealinesradio.us. And we're going to be doing more of those, folks. I'm sure as we meet more authors and we get more advanced copies of books coming out, we're going to try to do that as often as we can and pass that on to our listeners because you've hung with us for so long, you deserve to have a, a little bit coming back to you. Membership should have its privileges, and Lord knows this show has a a devoted following, and we're very happy that you're along with us for this ride, and this will be another way to say thank you. Other than us saying thank you, this is a way to say thank you. Final segment here on the show, and I want to wrap things up with a little bit of levity. I mean, we delved into the world of Schiff, uh, and, and frankly, I don't like what I see. I don't think you like what you see either, if, you, if you're listening to this show. But let's end on some a little more of a comical note, a little bit more of a, a, a an upbeat note. Not talking about the gloom and doom of uh, national security and intelligence and memos and, and infighting and partisanship and brinksmanship and all that. Last week, PETA sent a letter to Nickelodeon. Yes, that Nickelodeon that is putting out, you know, all the shows for for the kids between, you know, I mean, Nick Jr. in my house is just everywhere. If I have to watch another Peppa Pig, I'm going to go ballistic. 
Paw Patrol I can deal with. Some of the other ones I can deal with. Peppa Pig, no. But anyway.